Sweet guy he's thought like, he was getting away with something. <laughs> he's like, he's like, it's 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 so important that you let me out of this room right now. Right now, right now. <laughs> don't you understand? Uh, don't I understand? <laughs> you know what I don't understand? What's that? Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Pixel It. My name is Kevin. With me, as always, is Phil. Hello. And today we're starting on a brand new show. Mm. Brand new, brand new book. Uh, we're talking about Eco Castle in the Mist, which is an adaptation of the 2001 Team Eco game titled Eco. Eco. <laughs> Appropriately enough, titled Eco. So it was developed, uh, the game was developed by Japan Studio and Team Eco, and it was published by Sony and released for the PlayStation 2. Um, it is a wildly popular game among game designers. Yes. Like, Eco is a very influential game. Um, not it, It's one of those games where it's like, oh, not a lot of people have played it, but the influence of Eco is felt far and wide. Most notably in the other games that Team Eco has made, uh, which are Shadow of the Colossus and The Last Guardian. Now, did um, this come before Shadow of the Colossus? It sure after? did. Okay, it sure okay, did. It, it did. was their first. It was their first game. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, Shadow of the Colossus is a spiritual successor to Eco, so to speak. Kind of an unofficial prequel, isn't it? Yeah, I guess you could you could uh, tie them together. I feel like there has been like plot. Uh, stuff that, right. that ties them together that's the thing about eco and shadow of the colossus and and the last guardian is that they're all very and now i haven't played the last guardian i've watched playthroughs of it mm-hmm. um they're all very spartan and sparse they're they're very minimalistic and and they have this like melancholy that mm-hmm. kind of uh surrounds them um but yeah, Eco is uh, it's it's a classic, and it was I believe it was re released. Um, yes, in two thousand eleven, there was a re release of it and Shadow of the Colossus um, for the PlayStation Three, mm-hmm. and then Shadow of the Colossus uh, Shadow of the Colossus eventually had a full on uh, remake uh, in two thousand eighteen. Uh, but Eco does not have did not have the same. Uh, treatment applied to it yeah. uh, so to speak but yeah that's that's the game eco and in eco you you are controlling a a, a a boy named eco um and trying to escape this like castle uh with a with a girl who will not we won't get into her name or anything like that in the book so uh yet in in the parts of the book that we're covering in the game she's referred to as Yorda. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, it's it's kind of like a uh, you control Eco and you tell Yorda to stop go like you're, you're trying to, to to get her to do solve puzzles with you right um, so yeah that's that's Eco uh, Phil tell me a little bit about the author of this book yeah uh, this one was written uh, by Miyuki Miyabe. Uh, who is a wildly popular and successful uh, Japanese author. Uh, She has written kind of a little bit of everything. It's fascinating. Like she's really well known in some circles for her children's books. And in other circles, she's known for like her mystery novels, her fantasy stuff. She's done a lot of short stories. She's had, uh, she's written films uh, and a lot of her films have been adapted. Um, She's even done a little manga here and there. Like she is all over the place and is, is very, very uh, well respected. She's won a ton of awards. Um, She has a long list of books, uh, none of which I'm going to attempt uh, the, uh, to pronounce because, you know, I, I, I want to, you know, I want to be as respectful as I possibly can be. Uh, but she's had several books that were translated into English, uh, including this one. Uh, all she was worth is apparently that one came out in 1996 and that's one that keeps popping up. Um, Mm -hmm. it's a mystery thriller kind of novel that, uh, that keeps getting brought up, uh, by her uh, English speaking fans. Um, and that one has been translated. 
Yes, that one was translated. And uh, she's got a handful of translated stuff. Uh, All She Was Worth, Crossfire, Shadow Family, The Devil's Whisper, The Sleeping Dragon, Puppet Master. Those are crime and thriller novels. And then some fantasy stuff, uh, including uh, Eco, Castle in the Mist. And I'm, I'm glad you said the, the dates there because uh, it did. the original book came out in 2004 and it was translated in, into English in 2011 when the PS3 re-release mm-hmm. Yes, the uh, PS3 remaster, so to speak, of, yes. of Eco was released. And it I assume it seems like uh so Shadow of the Colossus was originally released in 2005. I was just wondering if they released the novelization of Eco to coincide with Shadow of the Colossus, but it does not it would look have been like just they, right before it. We also yeah. actually for the first time and I did a little more digging here, we have a translator uh, yes, Al- Alexander O. Smith, and this guy uh, is actually a very well-known and well-respected translator of Japanese. Uh, he went to Harvard uh, and uh, and and had got he kind of cut his teeth on translating video games, and that seems to be his major thing. But he's yep. won awards for best localization and that sort of thing. He's done Phoenix Wright. Uh, I think the first thing he did was Final Fantasy VIII. Um, uh, yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, he's done a ton of Final Fantasy, which I mean, if you're if you're translating Japanese games, you're probably going to be involved in Final Fantasy in some some yeah. way, shape, or form. Um, he did translation for um, you know uh, what is it? Yeah, uh, uh, ta- uh, Ogre Tactics and uh, Star Ocean and like a lot of classics. And he was a writer for Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Yeah, uh, which is the translation uh, translation, the sequel to Ori and the Blind Forest. Um, so this guy's all over the place, too. And he's it, he's worked with um, uh, Miss Miyabe uh, on uh, Brave Story, which was her children's book, which was huge. Uh, and so I guess I don't know if, if they just worked well together and she requested him again or something like that. Uh, but this guy is kind of the perfect person to do your translating because he's he's worked in the video game industry specifically. Uh, so the context, uh, you know, is is important to him. And, and I don't know, it just seems yeah. like seems like a good fit. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it, it, that's it's interesting. Um, the, the art because you you wonder about um, when you're reading a translated novel, Okay, how much of this is the original author's writing right. versus how much of it is is created through the translation? Right, and it seems like uh, Alexander Smith. Uh, there was a I was just on his Wikipedia page. Uh, part of his process is retaining as much of the very distinct style of the author in the translation. Yeah, um, so. I think that's that's kind of cool. We can mm-hmm. we can kind of uh, look at this novel like, all right, well, it is a work. It's a work of hers, um, and in a lesser extent, but uh, no less notable, it's a work of his as well. And yeah. in the translation, in the way that we're reading it, absolutely, um, yeah. With translation, it doesn't. It will not do to you know just run a book through Google Translate or something no. like that. Context needs to be added. Um, Things that a great example uh, I always think about, uh, and I, we may have even talked about this on the show before. Um, when I lived in Pittsburgh, I lived uh, next door to a young Japanese couple, and uh, uh, he would show me um, anime. And I was not really outside of like Akira, I, you know, I, sure. <laughs> I didn't know much about anime. And he would, and he, we would watch different shows. And I remember one of them, uh, uh, what was it called? Azumanga Daio. Uh, which is this weird, funny uh, comedy anime about Japanese schoolgirls and stuff like that. And uh, one of the characters, I think she was from Osaka. Mm-hmm. Uh, and but the, and the we were watching the dubbed version and she spoke with like a country Texas kind of accent. <laughs> and he and he explained to me, he goes, that's really clever because, you know, over in Japan, like traditionally people see people from Osaka as being kind of hayseeds or bumpkins or something oh, like that. Okay. So that choice, although it isn't a direct translation there, it makes it makes you understand. It gives the context. It, it retains right. some sort of the context of the character. Right. Exactly. She would have had an Osaka accent. 
probably. Right. Exactly. In, yeah. And it isn't exactly the same, but it's, it, you know, sure. uh, the best translators are able to know when to leave uh, the words as they are alone and when to, um, you know, get creative with it so that you can f- sure. better appreciate, um, you know, what you're looking at. Because otherwise you end up with, uh, you know, books like the Bible that uh, are just terribly translated. Of course. Yeah. Of course. That, we, we wouldn't want that to happen. Hey, hey, there's a munchkin on the loose. There's a munchkin. <laughs> right, close the door, please. I love it. It's our it's our evening wave. I've grown, <laughs> I've grown to look forward to it. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> she has to go finish her homework. Uh, <laughs> listen, guys at home, the kids love Pixel It. They can't get enough. Can't get enough. They they hop in to wave. Uh, we we are. This is. I think. I think what's important uh, for anyone to take away from all of this is that we're a family show. We are a family show. We've always been a family show. <laughs> the aristocrats. The um, aristocrats. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we're going to get right into it. We're going we're gonna to get right into eco. And you actually have a copy. I, I did not. Ooh. I did not uh, try to. Ooh, I love that cover, too. It's it great, is, isn't it? I love it so much. It was the it's the art for I think the Japanese and European version yeah. of the game. Yeah, um, it way better than the than, than the, the North American. American version. We always get the shitty covers. We that do. that that cover is so. Yeah, gorgeous. Does the cover have like it's like a close up of Eco with like a club or something like yeah, that? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, look, it's a guy with horns and a club. You'll like this. Like, come You'll on, like man. this. He's a was, Viking, maybe. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> First, you'll buy the game and go, what the fuck, if, if that's what you're hoping for. But we'll have your money, so it won't matter. <laughs> um, yeah, Sony of America was not doing anybody any favors. No. <laughs> what have they? <laughs> So we start out and this book is divided into four chapters and each chapter is divided into uh, a number of parts. Uh, So we're in chapter one, uh, point one, chapter one, part one. Yeah. (laughs) And and in this chapter, we're introduced to uh, a few characters, uh, the elder of the village of Tosca. And the elder is not actually ever given a name. He's just no. really known by his title. He is the elder. Um, and we learn about the time of sacrifice, which is the time that they are currently in. And we get some backstory about uh, when he was, he became the elder. He was uh, 57 years old. He just yeah. turned 70. So it's a flashback. He was 57 years old and his dad was on his deathbed. His dad was the elder. And his dad was was basically dying and saying, like, I didn't want to have to hand this over to you mm-hmm. and you have to deal with the sacrifice. And just then, like the sacrifice had been born. They had right. discovered the sacrifice being born in the um, and he, the his dad was like, I've never I never had to deal with the sacrifice. The last sacrifice was when I was a child. Um, so. His dad had held on for as long as possible before bequeathing him the title of elder um, so that he didn't have to deal with the time of sacrifice. Um, so basically what it is, is uh, the sacrifice is a child who is strong, he's healthy, and when he comes of age, he's going to grow some horns. Yeah, I was going to say, is it... it, it <laughs> I love that where it's like it's like how do you how do you know it's sacrifice? Is he is he born under a certain constellation? It's like no, he's born with horns. He's got he's got a couple bumps on his head, and eventually those bumps were will become what's up, Munchkin? (laughs) What did she say? She she like looked in and said, "Sacrificed human babies." Oh, Kevin, you're raising her right. She's a she's a good kid. The kids are all right. <laughs> the kids are all right. The kids are all right. So that's a- <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Guess I'm going to leave that in. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not you, goddamn right you are. We're not putting that anywhere. That's got to stay. <laughs> <laughs> so the sacrifice is born with two bumps on there. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, and I was gonna say, you gotta love you got because in so many ways, this book and 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 you know, and frankly, a lot of Japanese media in general, I've found to be very elegant with the way that they write, you know, prophecies and like the the chosen one thing, which is a which is a trope you see, you know, all over uh, media all over the world. Um, but I've always found that in anime and manga and, 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 and Japanese media in general, there's a certain level of elegance uh, with with the way they write that stuff. <laughs> and I love I, I love this one. It's just like horns. You'll no, know him by the horns. Kid has fucking horns on his head. You <laughs> can't miss yeah, it. It's like that's that's the one, man. What if what if you miss the star sign or whatever? No, we're not. No, we're not. We're no. no. The kid is going to have horns. It's going to be the only kid with horns. Right. Yeah. Don't trust worry about me. it. Yeah, you'll see him in a lineup. <laughs> That's the one. See the one? You, you know what? I'm not even going to tell you what it is. Look at the kids. Which one of these is not like the other? That's the You're one. Like, there it is. That's the that's, one. That's you the one. Pick you, pick that kid right out. You know um, I'm right. So the elder, the job of the elder is to raise the sacrifice as basically as their own kid. Um, and the elder in this case is pretty darn old. And he's like, well, what? Uh, what am I supposed to do? And be like, well, I'll raise him like he's a grandkid. And be like, okay. Right, yeah. um, and the sacrifices, <laughs> biological parents are sent away from the village. They're given a, a hefty payout. Um, like you gave birth to the sacrifice. Now you're going to go relocate to the capital or something like that. We're, we'll take care of you. It's just. We're sending you to Orlando. Uh, yep, for a pretty much well earned you're, retirement. <laughs> you're going to go to the villages and you're going to, you're going to retire up by Orlando. Mm. Um, <laughs> so uh, we are also introduced to uh, One, who is the wife of the elder, um, and uh, she's she's not taking this whole thing very well. I love <laughs> she's her. Oh she's just God. wailing and crying, um, and she's supposed to be working the loom that yeah. is uh, designed to weave the clothes that the sacrifice is supposed to wear. Um, so. We uh, it's, now we're in chapter one point two, and we're introduced <laughs> to everybody's favorite character, Toto. Just, Toto, poor Toto, poor Toto. Uh, <laughs> Toto is just a sweet boy. He is Eco's best friend. Mm -hmm. Um, so Eco is basically being kept in a cave until a two things happen: the the mark, which is the the clothing item that his his uh, mom, so to speak, is working on on the loom uh, is complete and be the priest from the capital arrives yeah. to like guide him away. Toto, out, he's, he hasn't been raised in the cave. He's he hasn't been raised been, in the cave. Right. He's just been in the cave for the past few days. Yeah. Since yeah. The they horn, just, they basically, him. basically what happens is the horns just fully sprout out and grow in one night. And that's the sign that things need to start happening. Right. Um, so Toto, his best friend, uh, sneaks behind the guards uh, and brings Eco baked goods and is basically like, come on, let's just run away. Let's just get out of here. This is yeah. dumb. And uh, Eco is very steadfast in his resolve. He's like, no, I cannot. I can't uh, because of what will happen to the town. And Toto doesn't believe basically a lick of anything like, eh, nothing's going to happen. Well, by the way, how does, how does the sacrifice work with eco uh, with the, uh, what, 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 what happens when he gets sacrificed? Uh, they're going to burn they, on the stake. They, <laughs> they don't say anything as yeah. to, he is just taken to the castle. Yeah. Uh, in the, beyond the forbidden mountain. I love the way they write the castle. I just, that's, I, I, that's it. That's I, there's I, yeah. the, there's the master of the castle demands a sacrifice. Yeah, we don't. And, and that, I, I, I ask because I love that aspect of it. It's like you, we truly they just and none of these kids have ever come back. And we don't kids, ask questions. Sac sacrifice doesn't come back, but we got to make it. Oh, man. I love and it. it's a big old shrug, you know? Just yeah. Like moving on, you know, <laughs> we got we we six, sent that kid away. Winter or <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's a moment where Eco uh, recalls to himself that there is basically a like a 
he was shown something by the elder that was terrifying. Like, this is why you need to do follow through on it. Yeah. Um, and they, uh, it's not explicitly stated what it is yet. Um, but Toto is, Toto, he wants to go with Eco. He's like, you know, my bud. I, yeah. I want to go with my bud. Um, and we're, in, so we're in chapter um, 1.3 and One is just, She's so sad. She yeah. is. She is the saddest person. Um, there is a quote. Actually, I need to find it now. Um, come on, Kindle. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you know the quote that I'm referring to. It's, Which one? It's the. It's a. It's about like the humanity of the, the sacrifice. Uh, oh yeah, they talk about that a lot when she's talking to her brother. Yeah. Oh wait, I can just pull up the uh my notes and highlights. There we go. Um it's something that um uh her brother had said to her. Yeah. So let me back up a little bit. One was born and raised in the capital, the big city. Um, and her brother, her older brother was had been sent off to the seminary for training he was top of his class and right before he was going to be ordained as a priest he drops out he's like you know what i'm out he goes and he moves to some small you know he fucks off to to some a uh, small little town um uh, when one gets married to the elder the man who will become the elder they start corresponding with letters and talking about like what what it means to be the elder uh, and what her responsibilities are and all that stuff. Um, and they, they talk through um, like a little bit about what the sacrifice is. And the more specific she asks the questions, the more uh, her, her brother starts to obfuscate and talk yeah. about like the light of God, the sun God, stuff like that. Yeah. The more specific um, she gets, the vaguer he gets. There's one quote here from from one of the letters, though, where um, uh, the boy, (laughs) he says, the boy has you enchanted, hasn't he? Don't forget, One, why he is so pure and kind and without fault. He is not human. His soul is empty and evil cannot cling to a void as it does to our tangled hearts. Emptiness absorbs only love and light and reflects it back. No wonder it's so easy for the one who must raise the horn child to love him. They see their own love reflected in his eyes. And I was like, damn, that's fine writing. Um, yeah. A, that's fine writing. And it's B, it's also a, a wildly fascinating take on yeah. the nature of the soul, where normally it's like, oh, soulless is like the... Uh, the evil you know or the or right. whatever michael myers from halloween he's just a right. soulless monster who who can't be stopped and be like and this takes the opposite take we're like no he if he doesn't have a soul therefore he's pure like mm. his his ability to reflect love is is 100 he is right. yeah. <laughs> yeah i was like that's interesting that's an that, interesting that, that take. soul is what actually mars us a little bit it's what or at very least it complicates us it takes right. it makes it t- tougher for us to be pure i i i totally agree i i honestly it, you know the first you know pieces of this book where we get into the elder and all that stuff was really interesting i i, I knew right off the bat we had something interesting in our hands but it was this part where we talk about her long lost brother and and uh, the the nature of a soul and and basically you you know you, it's impossible to miss the symbolism of him growing horns and being a sacrificial calf you know basically right. uh, uh, it, it it that was when I th- this was the clincher for me I was like oh this is gonna be good and you're like oh I'm in I'm <laughs> yeah. in I'm in like Flint fully invested um, uh, so we're interrupted a bit. For, uh, we we get steered away from this backstory of One's um, and her brother to uh, Toto. Toto, he interrupts. Ah, Toto, <laughs> um, kid. and he's like, uh, "Hey there, Eco." Happens to him. Hey, hey there. I hope nothing bad happens to Toto. <laughs> um, hey there, uh, Eco's mom. 
Because uh, <laughs> you know, that's what she is. Do you know where the priest is? Um, the priest that's supposed to take Eco away. And she's like, no, I don't. And uh, he's like, well, if I ask the priest something and the priest says it's okay, uh, that means the elder can't stop me from doing it, right? Because the <laughs> priest outranks the elder. And One is like, I don't, what do you, what? Um, and, and, but then she's also, yeah, uh, there's a, then a guard arrives and Toto has to flee. And Ona is like, well, I'm, I'm pretty happy though, that he did go and visit Eco. Like yeah. the, the kid, the kid is all like gusto and moxie, you know, he's 100% charisma, uh, charisma yeah. roles. On, yeah, on, maxed on this, out all his social skills. <laughs> maxed out all the social skills. So she was happy that, you know, Eco was okay. Well, and she's, and, I mean, and that's the thing. She, she has fully fallen into what the elder would believe is kind of a trap of like, like he's, yeah. he's, because all their other kids, their actual kids are all grown. And yeah, they're all, all their other kids have grown up, moved yeah. out, you know, but she have grandkids. loves this boy. And that's and, the thing is they talk yeah. about how like the grandkids are not like, the eco she loves eco even more than their grandchildren yeah totally yeah yeah she's pretty honest about it like they're like why do you love him more and he's like because he listens you little shit it's also it's also like it, it makes perfect sense that the the woman who wrote this is a children's book author i didn't dig too deep into it but like i i have to believe she's a mother because yeah. the way she writes Toto, for example, of that that little that he thinks he's being clever and he thinks that, oh, sh I'm slick. She's not picking up on what I'm saying. Well, if 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 he said I could do something, then he outranks the elder and I can do it. Right. It's just like ever anyone who's even seen a child for more than five minutes has heard those conversations. Yep. And you're just like, oh, you are. Oh, what are you getting at? What do you, I don't know what you're doing yet, but I but I'm going to find out. <laughs> why do i We're smell like, smoke why 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 do you ask why are yeah. you asking why are yeah. you asking me this what's going on what are you doing what are you thinking answer me first just, answer me first just wondering no, no, like no 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 no. we don't wonder we don't wonder in this house <laughs> raised you catholic you, for a reason what are you doing <laughs> Yeah, and, 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 and all right, I'm just going to say it again, I, I, and I'm going to keep saying it. She just, our author is creating such wonderfully crafted characters. They're yeah. so warm and and just, you, you love them. You love them right off the bat. And and she, yeah, this, it's, it's really good. Character. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's um, warm, loving characters. Uh, we're, we're barely into the book. And yeah. And we... The characters have a rich tapestry um, and, you know, they uh, it, they're not the characters from Dark Souls. Right. Right. I was going to say, you know, this is this is, you know, the, I haven't seen characters this well thought out and developed since uh, FNAF. It's the Silver Eyes. Yeah, no, uh, FNAF, so the, gosh, FNAF just, was. Yeah. FNAF is the best book we've read up so until far. Yeah. this. Up, uh, until, uh, up until Dark Souls. Uh, Backslash S on this post. <laughs> the S stands for sarcasm. Uh, um, one of the guards, basically the guard is there to escort One back into the town because the loom that she's working on is in a building that's just sequestered out in the woods. Yeah. So she is like totally alone with in her feelings about the uh, in, impending death basically of her child. Right. Um, and she's like, but you got to work the loom and weave the thing. Um, so this guard shows up to escort her back down cause it's nighttime and there be, you know, wolves or whatever. Sure. And uh, the guard's <laughs> like, sorry, I was a little bit late, but uh, one of the, one of uh, my men got injured out on a hunt um, because he looked North towards the North forbidden mountain and fell and 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 got really injured um so you get this idea of like even witnessing like looking out in that direction is enough to spook people mm -hmm. um uh meanwhile toto is like hmm well if they won't let me go with him what if i go ahead of him <laughs> 
I'm sure this will work out fine, Toto. This will, this will go great. Yeah. Um, and then we, uh, we're we in chapter 1.4 now, and uh, we cut into the cave where Eco hears from one of the guards that Toto has gone missing mm-hmm. and has taken the fastest horse, um, Arrow Wind. That's a that's a goddamn fast horse name. You know, that's a super I, fast horse name. Yeah. I am betting on Arrow Wind. Uh-huh. Um, Every time. And there is one of the most, I want to say, harrowing conversations between an adult and a child ever like that I've seen put on page. Oh, between uh, between uh, the Eco elder, and the, the elder oh. and and Eco. Yeah. Basically, the elder shows up. <sighs> And I was, I was, I was like almost about to cry for it ego in this heart. case. It it, broke it's my heart. So basically, the elder is like, "This is all your fault, and how could you be so cowardly? You, this is all part of some plan that you're gonna do to to run away." And Eco is like through tears, telling this man, the elder his father basically for all intents and purposes that he's he's telling him the truth he's not lying he's he he didn't tell toto to do anything and the elder uh, at some point is like um you know i i should have never like even like treated you like my son you're it's like this it is so cutting it is (laughs) It is. It is. And he hits him at one point, doesn't he? Like he slaps he does. him or something. Yeah. He's, Eco, Eco goes up and tries to hug him. Oh, and the elder right. slaps him away. Oh, it's it's <laughs> heartbreaking. Because and at no point do you not do you stop sympathizing with the elder. Like, like that's that's the best part. It's like it's like you you understand why he's so angry and why he assumes these things. You want to shake him and you know and like go listen to him, listen to the boy, listen to the boy. <laughs> but he's but but that's the thing. It's what he's raised to do. He has to he has to hold the boy at an arm's length when he can. And this is just another example of that. And it's like you know you've got it's like uh, you know Kevin and I were literally talking about. Before we got started, we're talking about the prospect of uh, I've been I've been working on homesteading skills and that sort of thing. And I've learned recently how to kill and process chickens. And we were, you know, Kevin pointed out that that's, you know, starting with a chicken, that's probably easier than doing, for example, a pig, uh, which could also be a pet. Uh, And uh, and and yeah, like it's that kind of thing where you have to eco is a sacrificial lamb. He is a sacrificial calf. He is not meant, but you've, it's like, it's like, well, we're going to buy this dozen chickens uh, so that in three months they'll be fully grown and we can kill them and eat them over the winter. And uh, your kid walks in and says, I've given them all names. And you go, fuck. (laughs) That's essentially what's happened here. He gave Eco a name. (laughs) So it's it, it it really broke my heart reading that uh, reading that segment. Um, we we cut to Toto and the horse and it the way it, this section is written is like I loved the way this initial approach up the mountain like yeah. where because it the narration says something like were Toto a trained hunter he would have known something was amiss immediately, but he wasn't. And it was, <laughs> you're like, oh no, something oh, bad's no. going to happen. Oh, Toto, <laughs> buddy. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I, and, and we've talked about this with Dark Souls most recently. I think where we were talking about one of the problems with Dark Souls was that it missed the tone and the atmosphere in many ways. And this is the first time that I was like, oh yeah. Cause while I haven't played eco, I have played shadow of the Colossus and mm. uh, they both have a similar atmosphere to them. This lonely, right. strange world kind of atmosphere. And this is where with Toto alone, we start getting into that and it felt very correct uh, for the source. Material. Right. Yeah. Uh, basically it's like he would have noticed that there's, no wildlife making any sort of noise as he mm-hmm. crosses through, uh, goes up the road. And I was like, yeah, that's, oh boy. <laughs> oh um, God. <laughs> so, uh, 
So um, we and he the 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 sec- segment ends with him coming up to the walls of this city, and he's like, oh, "That's weird. Everything is gray. Um, the the walls are gray from corner to corner, um, and also the it looks like the people are not moving at all, and also the flag is not moving. And I guess it must not be very. Uh, he's like." But he's feeling wind, you know, on his face. He's like, well, I guess it might must not be windy up there. And he's like, the flag is it's not like the flag is down. The flag is not moving, but it is mid like snap of a. Yeah, it, it looks like it is being perpetually blown, like perpetually blown. I heard it as soon as I said it. <laughs> I think we need a new T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just a frozen flag on it. It's perpetually, perpetually blown. Perpetually blown. <laughs> perpetually blowing mm. in a direction. Right. right. Yes. Right. Very good. Right. Mm-hmm. The aristocrats. The aristocrats. <laughs> the aristocrats. Um, so in, in section 1.5, chapter 1, section 5, uh, the elder... Not in great shape. He feels like he's losing control of the yeah. situation. Yeah, it, it might be getting away from him. <laughs> it might get, be getting away from you, Elder. It might be getting away from him. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> um, but we cut back to Toto pretty quickly. And he's walking through the city and everybody has been turned to stone. Um, Good. Great. Uh, great. At one point, he accidentally bumps into one of the stone people and the, the it collapses. They fall apart. Yeah. Just great job, Toto. <laughs> great job. This is a good idea, Toto. Yeah. You, you really thought this one through. So as he's walking through the city, this black smoke, uh, he thinks it's like a, a bats or birds or something mm-hmm. like that erupting from the castle. He can see the castle off in the distance. Um comes out and this is terrifying to imagine basically this black smoke turns itself into a giant like smiling face in the sky such a bummer (laughs) so arrow winds the good boy horse that we had already been semi-attached to freaks out and runs away the face uh blows a little gust of wind down and Arrowwind turns into a statue. Um and that's that's like mid Winnie, just just Ugh. petrified Ugh. uh by this smoke face, giant smoke face in the sky. Um so Toto he's running. He gets he he wake, makes his way inside of the uh, the houses. Um he's kind of like fighting his way through trying to hide, seeing if he can hide from from the the giant face in the sky. Um, and while he's doing this, he finds a hidden passage in one of the houses. It's basically like he falls down into the basement. Yeah. Um, it's like a library that they had down in the basement. And all the books are turned to stone, just like everything else is. Everything else is, sto- is like stone. And when you touch it, it falls apart. Um, except one. There's, there is a single book that he finds. Um, and it's white and it has like a light glow to it. And he takes it. Um, and the Book of Mormon, he, the book. Of, it, it, and <laughs> it's, this is Toto, this is how it all starts, people. Toto is Joseph Smith. Yes. You know, he's um, he's he's Joseph Smith, Brigham Young, all rolled into one. All rolled. The metaphors are obvious, people. Obvious. Keep up. So, so he finds it and uh, he he escapes and he's he's he runs out of the city he's basically covered in this ash and he just makes a makes a break for it um so we cut to the next segment and the the elder is informed that toto has returned uh and uh the elder goes in and and has a conversation with toto toto is basically laying down in a bed and he looks like he's he's not in great shape Mm -hmm. uh he's like covered in the ash from like the people he has people on him he's got people on him yeah he's got people on him uh and uh he sees the elder sees the book and he's like oh snap that's a is that what i think it is 
And Toto gives him the book and the elder like kind of wrestles it away from him. And after that happens, Toto petrifies. Yeah. Yeah. I, maybe probably a wrap on Toto. I think probably a wrap probably. on Toto. I think we're we're done with Toto because the only thing that was keeping him from not dying was holding on to the book. Right. <laughs> right. So thanks, Elder. Real, thanks, real Elder. Smooth move. And then the elder like sees the book and he flips through it and he goes back into the town and be like, all right, people, we got to we got to tighten up this fucking shit. All right. You everybody light the torches, light the torches. Uh, we're going to we're going to pray. We're going to s- put holy water down everywhere. We're going to purify this shit. All the kids uh, start singing and dancing, singing and kids dancing, singing kids. singing and dancing. It's it's, you know, Bible fellowship in here. Yeah, uh, we got to we got to purify and, and get this place ready for the high. We're going to holy war here, people. And he does yeah. say it's actually like we're preparing for war. Yeah. Um, and he uh, he goes to One and is like, here, start from scratch. Like, get this shit out of your loom. Stop it. Yeah, this is do bullshit. this one. Yeah, we'll new do one. this one. Do this one instead. And there's a yeah. different mark. Um, so the mark that One had been working on, uh, which is the the cloth tunic that mm. the the sacrifice is supposed to uh, is basically the one that sacrifices has, have always worn, and what. Uh, um, the elder finds in the book is a diagram for the mark, which is similar, but but distinct in the way the pattern, the, the I think they use the whirls of the pattern uh, yeah. are done. Yeah, um, at a glance, it looks like the same basic. At a glance, pattern, it looks like the same, but it's not. Yeah. Um, so he, he's like, you got to make it like this. It came from this book. Uh, you got to do this. Um and then, so we're on uh, 1.7, and it starts out with Eco having a dream about a, sw- like a, 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 a little pond that him and Toto found, and how refreshing and fun it was, and, you know, how good it was to be a kid. <laughs> really looking forward to playing with Toto again one day. <laughs> That's going to work out great. <laughs> uh huh. Um, <laughs> So the elder wakes him up and they have to, he asks him to try the mark on and um, and him and One are there and, you know, it's like put it on and like the mark, it actually actually like glows when it's mm-hmm. on him. And he's like, well, the mark recognizes you. Great. This is great. And they're like they're like kneeling in front of him and they're they're like, you're going to come back to us like y- this. Y- you have to go there and you're going to come back to us. And it's like this like little emotional moment of like, yeah. you know, um, you know, the family kind of re the family unit kind of getting back together. And they, yeah, because they have yeah. been kind of they they started the book a little bit fractured. You know, the yeah. elder was kind of pissed off at One because she was not taking her time making the thing. One was sad because her her baby boy, her sweet baby boy, yeah. Eco was going to go off to die. And Eco was, you know, in a cave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I there was. Yeah, there's a brief moment where uh, they point uh, Eco thinks that uh, uh, the elder, he looks at the, 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 the way he's talking to him. He said, this is he thinks this isn't the same uh, man who hit me earlier. Right. Like, so it's kind of like this quiet, like all is forgiven kind of moments. Really? Sure. Lovely. Yeah. Um, and then they have to basically take the mark back off and be like, all right, now give us the mark and, and don't, don't tell the priest about. Yeah. Don't, uh, don't uh, keep it to yourself. Keep it under your hat, boy. So, uh, the priest arrives and a lot of this chapter is basically like the priest doing his, his bullshit His like, he cast in a spell, eco is the sacrifice, all that stuff. Um, and he he's like, all right, this kid is acceptable to be sent off to a castle in, in on the mountain to die. <laughs> Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Um, and they put the mark on him and uh, they, they they take him onto the carriage. It's the priest and his two guards and it's eco and and. 
off they go. And Eco is going to spend the trip in chains. You know, he's all he's all chained up. He has in order to eat his soup, he has to like bend over and lick it up like a dog. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess they're not taking chances with him. They're not taking any chances with the with the sacrifice. Uh, one of the guards is nicer to him than the other, though. Um, I liked that. It, again, it was just this little thing. We never hear this guy's name. We don't see we don't even see his face. He's wearing his a face helmet. is never he's wearing a big old helmet that you can't see his face. Right. Um, and 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 he has these she writes these moments in where that guard clearly like I think Eco like speculates that maybe he has a kid back home or something yeah, like that. And, and yeah, he's he he's that he's a father or something right, like that. Because he treats him like, you know, it, it, yeah. it just these little moments of kindness. Whereas the priest and the other guard uh, won't, uh, don't talk to him. And they say, don't talk to him. Don't don't talk to us. Don't acknowledge us. Yeah. You know, and they yell know. at the other guard occasionally for right. like, you know. So it's, it's a little moment of human kindness. Really the, yeah. She does an amazing job. Yeah. Humanizing yeah. random characters. Like even these, just this guard. Yeah. He's in it for a real brief amount of time. Very, uh, very is, little amount of time. And you, and you still just feel like, I think I know this guy. I know, I know that, or at least I know this kind of person. I've met this, right. this kind of person. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, I liked it. Uh, yeah. Me it's too. good stuff. Uh, now we're in, in chapter two. Um, so that was all chapter one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. By the way, <laughs> by the way, that was all chapter one. This is actually where the game picks up. Um, this is the chapter two is the opening cut scene of eco, um, yeah. for the most part. So they arrive, um, uh, they arrive at the castle. Uh, they w- they go the, uh, up the winding road to the castle, and they get out uh, of the carriage uh, at the bridge. Um, but the bridge to the front gate of the castle is broken. Um, and there's a nice little poetic line of like, "No entry, no exit." Like mm-hmm. you can't get in, and you also can't get out. Um, right. The only way to get into the castle, they have to go down uh, to the water and take a boat. Uh, across the waterway uh underneath the castle into like the the into the cliffs under the castle and then um there's this moment where the guard one of the guards has to use a sword that he's that is clearly too heavy for him to wield but yes it's the sword is like casts a spell um on himself the two guards the priest and like the icons in the the iconography in the area it like gives them all this like white glow or something like that. And I don't think it's it's not explained yet. I don't think as to what that does. I think given what we find out later that it's like a protection uh, spell yeah. or something like that. It's like uh, a ward or something. A ward for for whatever is in the castle. Um, doesn't go on eco. He's he doesn't. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fuck that kid. Right. Eco doesn't Am I glow. right, people? Everything else glows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then they go up, uh, basically up an elevator. It's like a round stone platform that raises uh, them up into a room filled with sarcophagi. Um, and uh, they they choose one of the sarcophaguses that looks pretty much the same as all the others. And uh, the guards take the lid off and they're like, well, get in. Yeah. And they put him in. <laughs> <laughs> you, ever, you ever seen Kill Bill, kid? And it's like, oh, so this is what the, the sacrifice is. You just put a kid in the sarcophagus and leave him there. Cool. Cool. That's very cool and good of you. Yeah. That's great. Awesome. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Um, so, so. Eco, we're in two, two 2.2 now. Eco is sitting in the sarcophagus just wondering I don't know what's going to happen next. Um, and eventually the sarcophagus starts to like rock a little bit and it, it tips over, uh, breaking open, sending him flying. And he hits his head on the floor uh, and it knocks him out. And he yeah. goes into basically like a dreamlike state where he wakes up in another part of the castle and um, it's dark and it's raining and he's in a tower and he has to 
uh, he sees a cage up in the ceiling and he, he's got nothing to do but climb the tower. And he, he climbs all the way up to the tower. And what he finds in the cage is um, like a, a, a inky blackness, like that it's like a void that doesn't really have a form. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it seems like it, se- it seems maybe like a person at times, but it doesn't. Um, and eventually it, it starts to like, consume everything and then he wakes up and yeah. he's where he hit his head um you know not that long has passed since right. he fell yeah. out of the sarcophagus <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um so he starts exploring the castle jumping around doing his sacrifice stuff of being able to jump and climb and all that and uh he finds a window that he can jump into uh and he jumps through the window uh and now he is actually in the room that he just dreamed about, but it's daytime. Yeah. Um, but it's the same situation. There's a cage all the way at the top of the room. So he begins climbing up, climbing up to the top of the cage. Um, he sees that there is a girl. There's a there's a person in it. Um, and he finds a lever to start l- like lowering the cage down to the dais on the on the floor. Uh, and it gets stuck. He jumps on the top of the cage because Maybe that'll do something. And it does. Right. It's the, and it the does. Chains are, the chains are broken. Knocks the cage all the way down. Um, and when they get down to the bottom, uh, these smoke monsters basically appear and start attacking uh, and dragging the girl away and trying to pull her into the, the smoke puddle that they emerge from. Um, Eco grabs a torch from the wall uh, and... Uh, I forget. It goes out. I think he like swings it at one of the monsters and it immediately extinguishes. Um, But he can still make contact with them, like kind of back them, back them the F up. Uh, He he fights his way to the girl. He grabs the girl and he gets sent into another similar dream like the one that he had Um, a dreamlike state. It seems like he's sent back in time. Um, Yeah, because it's like. He's in the that room again, but it's clearly at a like it's looks better. It looks fre- like newer, fresher. And he right. sees it, he sees the cage, but it's not damaged like he had just damaged it. Um, and he sees an old man kind of muttering to himself. Um, it's talking about how this how the castle is walking towards its destruction. Right. Um, and then we're back. We're back in present day. Um <laughs> He wakes up, he snaps out of it. He's able to pull the girl away from the the smoke monsters and she goes uh, up to these, there's these idols that are blocking the doorway. She's able to like say something to the idols and it it casts that light spell. It's, I think it's similar to that light spell that the guards cast. Yeah. And and it kind of like bounces around and it just like knocks away all of the smoke monsters and like the pool and that they were emerging from and everything. And then the idols slide out of the way and they can, they can leave. Yeah. Um, and it's like, it's like, we're, we're in a very interesting spot in the book because like it, the action really picks up here in this, in, in chapter two. Yeah. Um, all this time, Eco is kind of talking to himself and to the girl and he's like always reminding himself, like, you don't understand anything that I'm saying. <laughs> right. Yeah. It be- becomes very clear that she doesn't speak the same language as he does. <laughs> he's like, he's like, Can we- you want to come? And you're like, you you don't get what I'm saying. You don't understand yeah. what I'm doing here. <laughs> yeah. Much of what he says to her uh, uh, could be directly transcribed from the things that I say to my cat when I'm alone and cleaning the house or something like that. So it's a <laughs> very similar vibe. What are we doing now? All right. All right. We're cleaning, huh? You don't you don't understand me. Okay, fuck it. <laughs> it's basically eco and he's just like yeah. frustrated and also he just starts it it gives um I think it's good because it gives the narrator the the author an excuse for eco to just kind of continue talking to himself. Yeah. Like Yeah. He's like, whatever, you don't understand me. I'm just going to keep talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah I don't, I'm, st- I'm going to keep, it doesn't matter. I'm just, it doesn't matter. If you gotta, I'm going to keep talking. It doesn't matter. They find, um, so they, they, they get to like a bridge and they find another statue. 
Um, except this statue starts telepathically talking to Eco. Um, like the statue's hand comes down and it, it puts its his hand on Eco's shoulder, and it starts t- talking about the history of the sacrifice and how the statue is probably of the guy who was the original sacrifice. Right. And he refers to the sacrifices as his children. Um, not necessarily, he's not like the, his literal, like biological father. Yeah. I don't think, but that the, I don't think, yeah, so far, I don't, I don't think as far as we know, um, but that the sacrifices are generally his children. Um, and he had this kind of, I gotta pull it up here. Give me one second. Cause he had this like list of things that he, uh, mentions, um, see, that's the, the problem with the, uh, the Kindle version is that the, that I can, I can only jump to the start of the chapters. Yeah. Like chapter one, chapter two. Et oh yeah. Yeah. What's it? I think I'm I'm there. Oh, there we go. Here we go. So um, basically the the this knight speaks to him in these very short sentences like and they're they're coming right into his head. It says castle in the mist, resentment this strong, sin this deep, long years of atonement this cruel. One thousand years of time did not erase my sentence. Barren years spent imprisoned here. Even now it tortures my body, binding me to this place, but my son. And I just imagine that as uh, the uh, from the Superman. Um, what's his name? Um, uh, Jor-El. Who played Jor-El in, in the original Superman movies? Marlon, uh, Marlon Brando. Brando. Yeah. Yeah, my, <laughs> my son. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My son. <laughs> Brando. Um, so he says that to him. And then he basically, the night just like, fucks off like Mm -hmm. disappears down the down the bridgeway um and they follow him and they find him um they find the statue now is like up on the wall or something like that in a completely different position and um the the, uh he's he starts talking to the girl again be like will the castle curse this guy too and be like do you do you know anything (laughs) <laughs> do you know what's going on? Do you know his name? Yeah. And she uh, she just like shakes her head. And she's got this like every time they describe her, she's like, she's the most pure, innocent, doe-eyed creature you've ever imagined. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, bud. All right. <laughs> just, uh, just keep, keep, keep it, keep it calm here, bud. <laughs> <laughs> um so they uh they continue on um uh part of the bridge then collapses um they kind of like save each other and then they they just continue on deeper into the castle yeah. and uh that's that's where we're leaving off yeah uh, a lot of stuff happens a lot of stuff a lot of stuff happens. this is easily one of our most involved like this is more involved like this is this is right up there with like the halo books we've read in terms of like how intricate and multifaceted uh, uh, of a story this is. Now, I, I feel like now that we're in the castle, it's going to be a little more straightforward. Yeah. But geez, like, yeah, there's a lot of mythology building here. Yeah. I, and I think it's it's amazing because yeah. it's all the first chapter, the bulk of what we talked about tonight, all added stuff. Yeah. It was like it was all added by the author. And I was like, that is that is some good shit right there. Yeah. yeah. It's it's well developed. It's charming, but it's got a lot of drama and and danger behind it. Like, you know, we've got you've got everything from like, 
you know, parent and child relationships being tender and tragic and beautiful to uh, uh, being chased by a weird face and being turned into stone. We're, we've killed a teenager, uh, you know, and, and it's, it, and at no point is it jarring. Uh, it all flows so beautifully. Uh, I can't tell you how excited I am about this book so far. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I dig it so far. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's about one third of the book that we covered tonight. Uh, so we'll be going through three episodes on this. Um, and I think episode two, if it gives any indication as to like what the rest of chapter, what the first part of chapter two is like, I feel like it's probably going to be a bit quicker paced um, in terms yeah. of, of the intricacies and stuff like that. It's going to be more, now, there was an author's note at the beginning saying, like, this yes. is not going to follow the game directly. Yeah. This is not a walkthrough of the game. So, yeah, don't. she makes a point of saying some of the solutions to the puzzle are, di are different. And, uh, you know, she she's pretty open about, like, I, I, I swapped some stuff around and changed some stuff, which is which is great. I think yeah. that's I think that, you know, whatever you got to do to make it fit better as a cohesive story and theme and all that stuff, go for it. And uh, that's something that, um, SD Perry did, if you recall, all the way back to our very first series. All the way back. All the way back. 80 uh, some episodes ago. Good um, Lord. <laughs> SD Perry did that um, with some of the solutions for the puzzles in in um, uh, the Umbrella Conspiracy, where, you know, it was just like, oh, yeah, Jill just smashed the glass open. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's good adaptation then. It's good ad adaptation now. It's exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, I guess that really only leaves one question. What's that? What are you playing? Oh, OK. Well, I, I've been I've been all over the board a little bit lately. I, 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 I wrapped up a, a little bit. I think I'm done with tiny folks for the time being. I've been playing a lot of. Uh, Marvel Snap. I even I, I popped back in on uh, Card Shark a little more. Uh, played Sex Chess. I've also been looking into. Wait, what? Uh, that? Hmm. What'd you uh, play? Uh, Marvel Snap. Uh, the one. No, that no, no. A after that. A after oh. The oh, oh, you mean Sex Chess? Sex Chess. <laughs> I would like to hear more about this. <laughs> it came out. It came out this week, yeah. and uh, it. it when I was uh, young, uh, one of the first NES games I ever played was Battle Chess. Uh, and uh, for those of you, for those of you playing the home game, uh, Battle Chess basically took, uh, it's just chess, uh, but when you killed a, a figure, when you took, took their knight or a pawn or something like that, there would be a fight scene and it varied depending on who was killing who. And uh, it was very entertaining. It was actually a really smart, uh, only quasi manipulative way uh, in uh, to getting uh, uh, young kids into learning about chess and uh, keeping them interested. And based on what this game uh, looked like, I was expecting it would be the same thing uh, with, uh, but with, uh, over the top, silly, naughty sex scenes. Sure. Uh, because while I wasn't looking, Steam just said, yeah, fine, fuck it, put your porn game in here. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and, uh, so I was like, okay, this looks silly. It, it, it clearly has a sense of humor about it. Sure. It doesn't look amazing in terms of like the, the graphics, all that stuff, but there's some creativity here. I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. And it was released last week and it was, uh, five bucks or something like that. And I was like, yeah, yeah. fine. Fuck it. Uh, I'll, I'll try this. Uh, I have the unfortunate duty to inform you that it turns out sex chess, not very good. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know this news comes as a blow. Uh, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> Hey, yo. Hey, uh, it's so unfortunate because it, it's one of those things where you really could have had a lot of, I, I, I have no problem with sex games. Uh, when Honey Pop came out, it was one of my top games of the year. I, I think if you come at it, Leisure Suit Larry was one of the most, one of my favorite franchises of all time. There, there is room for fun, sexy games uh, if you know what you're doing and, and you're having fun with it, and, sure. and, you know, you give it the proper respect and by proper respect, I don't mean, uh, 
watering things down. I mean, trying. Uh, yeah. Just because there's a pair of tits doesn't make it awesome. Right. Uh, and uh, so basically in the game, the, the storyline, such as it were, is... Uh, oh, there's a storyline. Yeah, believe it or not. It's heaven versus hell. And uh, you are... Uh, I, I They surprised me. I thought I was playing uh, heaven. I'm, I'm, you're playing the devil, at least in the level I played. And uh, you're playing an angel and trying to defeat the angel. Uh, and... Uh, all of the different figures are very elaborate and strange. And, 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 um, it was part of what gave me, like, I was like, this could be fun. Like the, the angelic night. It's so weird because the angel side, the heaven side, uh, uh, they make a big point of him, like being, like talking about how I, he, like basically sex in kind of like, it's impure and you're being impure, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, the, angel speaking about impurities and stuff is wearing four cock rings uh, made out of solid gold <laughs> with a dick hanging halfway to his knee. And, uh, and then when you're playing the actual game, the knight on the angelic side is this woman riding a, a, a levitating butt plug. Um, sure. And, uh, and the, the king on the devil side is a guy uh, with a scepter. That's just a pink dildo. Uh, and it's just absolute, craziness just to look at it and then you get to the battle modes like where you you know you you take someone's rook or whatever and it's some of the most uncreative boring uh it's not even a scene uh like that like i said with battle chess like for example if you took the queen with the rook in battle chess the right. rook picks up the queen and swallows her whole and you know and belches out a shoe i, I, I right, that, right that right. might not be true i i, I might be Something along those in. lines, though. Yeah. yeah, something along those lines, and uh, and it was like, ah, that's funny, and it just it, it it takes a few seconds. It's funny, it's fun, and uh, you know, and it's it makes it neat. With this, it's just the same. Like they all have different sexual animations, but mm -hmm. it's the same thing over and over and over again on a loop, and it's mm. very dull. Uh, sure. <laughs> to, it, and if there's anything that your just sex the worst game, crime a game like that yeah, can commit, if yeah. If your sex game can avoid anything, it is being dull. And and I actually uh, I I couldn't play it uh, further than that. It was sure. Uh, un I know that this news is shaking the video game community at yeah. large. Uh, it does have, as I recall, it has a very good score on Steam. Don't listen to it. It's just people wanting to make funny uh, uh, reviews and stuff like that. It is, yeah. it is actually not good. Uh, okay. And uh, just, just play chess. Um, just play chess. <laughs> so after I got over the disappointment and the shock that I was feeling uh, at, the, at uh, Sex Chess, not being a good game, uh, I did end up playing the Resident Evil uh, Village DLC uh, that huh. you talked about last week. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, oh yeah, it's great. Yeah, I I love that game so much, Kevin. Oh, like, it's such a good game. It's such a good game, and yeah. I'm not finished with it yet. But um, it's just it's it's a terrific excuse uh, to uh, you know get back into that world with some new mechanics and uh, some new takes on things and. Um, it's not, it, it got me to thinking, um, it's funny cause you know, I'm not a huge Metroidvania guy, sure. uh, but when you think about it, Resident Evil, which is one of my favorite franchises ever, uh, has a heavy Metroidvania aspect to it. It's, oh yeah, totally. You know, the puzzles aren't terribly complex. You're just kind of running from one end of the, the, the map to another as you collect things and other things become unlocked. And I love it. I'm always here for it. it. It always makes me happy. And maybe it's just because Metroidvanias are so sprawling and my ADHD shuts me down uh, before, <laughs> I can, before I can get too deep into it. Um, right. With some exceptions, uh, 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 Blasphemous being one of them. Um, but uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I haven't gotten into like the shooty modes and stuff like that that they have. That was never really my my cup of tea but i'm like it's enough that you know i paid 20 bucks for this thing i might as well get the most out of it might as well you know yeah yeah so yeah that's where i'm at what, uh, what kevin what are you playing all right uh what am i playing um i am playing god of war ragnarok oh um, okay which is right. pretty darn good so far 
Um, did you get that on your PS5? Yes. Okay. Yes, I did. Um, it's available uh, for PS4 and PS5. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think next year they're planning on doing the PC release. Right. Um, because it's one of the Sony exclusives, but sure. um, Sony has been doing more with with getting the PC version of games out there. Um, yeah, God of War, uh, Ragnarok, really interesting game so far. Um, I feel like I'm about ten hours into it, okay. um, and it's it's got a a really strong narrative. Um, and I'd say that's probably one of the things that separates it from, let's say, Elden Ring, right? Mm-hmm. Which is the the Elden Ring's narrative is is very um, understated and much like a lot of the from soft, soft stuff um, yeah. really focused on the the world that you're exploring. Um, God of War is is a very strong on character um, character and the the plot and all that stuff, um, and they are doing a hell of a job um, with with the writing on this one. Nice. So. Um, I yeah, so far I'm really digging it. Uh we'll see uh we'll see how I feel when I, you know, get all the way through it. But yeah, God of War Ragnarok has been my main uh the main thing I've been playing recently. Nice. Um and I also started I also installed a power wash simulator on my ah. <laughs> on my Xbox Series S. Uh <laughs> and it's nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a scratch an itch or it, yeah i mean i power wash like our back patio often enough <laughs> to be like you know i'll just do it with my headphones on and be like yeah it's actually kind of satisfying to to watch it get clean um so yeah i think i might spend a little bit more time you know nice with that that yeah i, I can't think of two games that it like there's Diametrically such a contrast opposed. But just, it makes perfect sense when you think about it, though, because you're not yeah. going to put down God of War and then go, all right, on to Elden Ring or something like that. Yeah, you know? like God of, like I'm, I'm, I'm going to put down God of War in favor of like Last of Us Part Two or right, right, something like that. You know, <laughs> some some very narrative driven game. Um, yeah, no, it, it's like God of War Ragnarok into Power Wash Simulator. I think those two go together. That you're makes like, a lot I need sense. to. I need to just like chill and yeah. throw on a podcast. Let's know what's going on behind the bastards this week yeah. and oh, uh, see what's great up. Show. Great show. Great show. Great show. Um, but speaking of great shows, that'll do it for this great show. This great show is ended this, for now. Yeah, that's 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 all we got for you for now. Um, so please, please follow us on social media. Twitter is still active so far. But it might not be by the time this episode comes out. I gave that warning last week, but it's even more dire now um, because the bankruptcy stuff and all that. So follow us on Twitter at Pixelit Pod for as long as that is relevant. And also on Instagram at Pixelit Pod. Uh, better yet, go to our website, pixelitpod.com and sign up for the newsletter, which we can send you newsletter email straight into your inbox. So you'll never miss an episode. Um, or when we post other stuff, um, yeah. uh, we're going to, we we're can, trying to expand, we're and, trying to uh, expand, yeah. try some new stuff out. And this is going to be probably the primary way, uh, that we get a lot of that stuff out to you. So join exactly. up on that newsletter is going to join be up, uh, get in there, put all you, all the costs is your email address. You just drop it in there. Listen, you got a lot of shit in your inbox anyway. Absolutely. You know, why not we sign up for something? We might as well be in there too. We might as well be in there too. <laughs> and guess what? We're we're actually giving you something. We're right. giving you our love. Lots and lots, lots of love. and lots of it. So pixelitpod.com. Go ahead, hit sign up for the newsletter. Yes, uh, the the subscribe button is spelled wrong. Yes, that's my fault. Yeah, I'll get to it probably to, by did the time I, this. Oh my god, did I miss that? By the time the episode comes out, I'll probably get to it. You know, <laughs> does it only take me two seconds to change it to fix that? Yes. Is there yes. an autocorrect on the thing? No, there isn't. There it's isn't. just just me, just me, baby, and and, <laughs> and just misspell. You know what? I might leave it there just to show you how much I love. But but if it's if it's there, if it's fixed by the time you get around to it on this episode, then fuck it. Fuck it. Who knows? Fuck it, you know? Um 
So yeah, uh, subscribe to our newsletter, pixelitpod.com. Also, uh, from our website, you can join our Discord and our Steam group where we drop reviews of the uh, of the games that we talk about and what are you playing. Hey, um, I've even been popping into the Discord now and then. Phil has actually been... He is positively huh? active on Discord recently. Yeah. And when I say that, that's like he said 10 things over the course of three weeks. Right. But that's, but that's a lot. That's up from zero. Yeah. Over the- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sound like my mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, that'll do it for tonight's episode. <laughs> um, yeah. You're yeah. wrong. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Uh, that's... Uh, that's that's an even deeper cut than yeah that's a well well um oh. <laughs> speaking All right. of deep cuts Spe- uh, yes anyway uh that'll do it for tonight's episode have a good night everybody <laughs> good night bye